All right, thank you for joining me the second time. Well, we had some technical difficulties, so we're gonna try again. Uh, the microphone wasn't working for whatever reason, so I'm gonna try to talk really loud. I hope you can hear me all right. Why don't you uh, send me a message and let me know. Uh, send me a message on Facebook so that I know that you're actually hearing what I'm saying and my voice is loud enough because I'm trying really, really hard to project. Well, I'm Ginger Ziegler, and we're going to talk to you today about the nation. And uh, people have been asking me uh, different things, and God has talked to me about the nation. I do have some things I'm going to share with you, and uh, I believe we're going to we're going to pray together. And as we pray together, then we're going to be able to see that uh, we can have an answer. We do have an answer for this. And so, what I want you to do first is I would like for you to. Um, send me a message and let me know this thing is working right. That would be, <laughs> that'd be a good beginning so we can see. Um, <clears throat> all right, they said that the, Julie said the sound is great. All right, thanks a bunch. Here we go, we're gonna get started. Now then, what I want to do is I'm gonna talk to you. I want to teach what I was trying to share a while ago when it wasn't working is I listen to the different prophets, then I find scriptures and then I start teaching what they have prophesied, what they've decreed. Teaching helps us, it does one step, two step, like that. And so we're able to actually activate into what is being prophesied. Sometimes when things are prophesied, we still need steps to be able to get there. One of them, of course, is decreeing, praying, but then it's actually understanding what's being said. So today, I didn't even realize this morning that today is March 20, 2020. Isn't that amazing? So we started doing a little bit more research this morning. I had some people helping me, and we were finding out what the number 20 means. We're going to talk about that. But before we start, <clears throat> and forgive my voice, but it's going to work. I'm telling you, God has put his words in my mouth, and you're going to hear a word that is going to help you. I'm speaking to people who love to pray, who know how to pray, and who love this nation. And so I'm Ginger Ziegler with Embracing His Grace, and we are absolutely going to come at this thing. Now, it's, what I'm going to share with you has to do with the whole of it, has to do with a big part of it. So before we get started, this is what I want us to do. I want us to decree together that Jesus Christ is Lord in the United States of America. Will you just say that with me? Jesus Christ is Lord in the United States of America. Now, you start decreeing that. Every time you think about it, if you're getting ready to wash the dishes or pick up your key, car keys or whatever, just say, Jesus Christ is Lord of the United States of America. Then the second decree is Jesus Christ. This is one nation under the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is one nation under the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is one nation under the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you take those two decrees and you start doing those, you're going to do so much. It's going to be awesome because Satan is the prince of the power of the air. And he likes to put all those negative words. And we've heard everything. I'm sure you've heard everything under the sun out there. It's saying all kinds of goofy things. And people are saying the right things. Prophets are prophesying. And somebody else comes and tries to tear that prophecy apart. So every time we say Jesus is Lord over the united states of america and then we're putting words out there in the atmosphere that is creating that situation god said let there be light and it created that situation so what i want to share with you today is how we're going to put creative words out there in the atmosphere that is going to have an effect on the United States of America, starting right now. Today is such an important day. I didn't even realize that Crystal was telling me some things that she found out. Today is very important. In March, just think about what I'm saying. This is the third month, the 20th day, 2020. 20 is very important, like I shared with you. Um, also, some of you have been asking me, I had quite a few uh, messages that asked me about the fear book. If any of you would like the little fear book, I did, it's a mini book. If uh, you can have it, it's free if you want it. Uh, if you'll send an offering of $12, that will help us out. And uh, you can either do it through PayPal or you can email me, staff at embracingsgrace.org, or you can just send an offering to P.O. Box 163-555, Fort Worth, Texas, 
7616 P.O. Box 163555 Fort Worth, Texas 76161 Can y'all tell I got a Texas accent with my 555? <laughs> anyway, if you'd like a copy of that, just let me know. I'd be glad to send it to you. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to make three points. So you got to stay with me. Now you know the devil is already aggravating and trying to stop this, but he didn't. He can only procrastinate things, but he can't stop them. When it's God's will, God is going to have his will in his way. And so you stay with me. I got three points I want to make. One of them today is we need to learn prophetically exactly where we are. If you don't, if I didn't know I was in Fort Worth, how am I going to find Atlanta, Georgia? I mean, I wouldn't know if I was going to go north, south, east, west, you know, what direction. So we got to find out where we are. An Issachar anointing, Issachar was one of the 12 tribes. What it does is it recognizes the times and the seasons of what Israel ought to do. But that Issachar anointing, that prophetic generation is operating right now with us here in the United States. And so the Issachar anointing also not only tells us where we are, but it tells us how to get free from the bondage. Isn't that amazing? That Issachar anointing is so important. And so that's what we're going to pull on today. And another thing, if you study it out, that Issachar anointing pulls down the structures that the, that the Jezebel spirit has tried to raise up. Isn't that something else? Anyway, I don't have time to teach on that, but that's, that's what we're doing today. What God has blessed no man, nobody, no group of people, and no demon has the right to curse or change it. God has blessed us, this nation. This nation, amazing grace. Just think about this nation. He has shed his grace on us. We are going to do something about turning this thing around today once you understand. That's point number one. So point number two is... I want you to know, this is my point today. When God spoke to me last week, he showed me, I said, God, I want to know what's going on. I always want to know the big picture. I like to see the big thing. And then when you see the great big picture, then you can get steps going there. And I said, what is going on? I know it's bigger than this virus. What is happening out there? This is like crazy. Like we've never been here in our nation before. And it's not going in the right direction. And so God began to show me. So my second point today, point number one, we're going to find out where we are and what we can do about this. Point number two, it's bigger than this virus. Did you get that? I want us to go after the big guys, okay? So point number three is if you will understand what I'm sharing today. And you won't judge me and say, oh my gosh, you should have heard what she said. <laughs> you should say, oh my gosh, you should have heard what she said because it's going <laughs> to help you. But if you'll hear what God is saying and hear my heart, I know what I've heard from God. I started praying for this nation November 1991, and I have never stopped. Most of the time I pray in the secret prayer closet. I have this group of praying ladies and men that know how to pray. And we have done prophetic acts. We've done all kinds of things. And then the next day or maybe the next week, we see the manifestation of it in the news. And so I'm not saying an expert. I'm doing my little part. This is my part. I'm doing my part today. Are you willing to do that with me? I'm going to see who else has signed up with me today. I want to know who I'm talking to because I text a whole bunch of my friends and uh People I've been praying with forever. Hey, Mary, I knew you was going to be there. Lynn, I knew you was going to be there. Maggie, thank you, thank you. And so I asked you guys. I had like, I don't know, it was 150 or maybe close to 200 comments. I said, would you guys pray for me and hold up my arms and help us win this battle? The reason I made those statements, in November of 91, I was in Cape Town, South Africa, and I was preaching and enjoying having a blast. I loved every minute of it. Then God came along and interrupted it. He said, I want you to go back to America. <laughs> I want you to help America. And I said, how am I going to do that? And he said, I want you to take what's in your hand, that prayer group. And I want you to be like Joshua and hold that sun and that moon back. And I said, Lord, I don't even know what you're talking about, but I'll do the best that I can. So I came back and... We have had every kind of prayer for this nation you can think of. We've done 24-hour prayers. We've done 12-hour prayers, 8-hour prayers, 3-hour prayers, 21-day prayers, 
five day prayers, I don't mind, you just name it. And this group, of, and we prayed an assignment that God would give us for each one. Now today, he has given us an assignment. Can you see that? He has given us something to do. And if he gives you an assignment, that means you can accomplish it. And so together, we're going to accomplish it today. And we're going to turn this day is a, is a day that our nation is hinging today. I heard Dutch Sheets uh, was a week or two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And he said, we're at a place this year where it's like the hinge on the door. And I'm telling you what, God has opened the door and no man can close it. No devil can close it. We're hinging today. This is a very important day. Even uh, Perry Stone talked about it. He said, he said, we're in this day where things are about to happen. It's changing. I know it is, and you know it is. Now, I'm giving you hope, but I'm also giving you a battle plan, <laughs> okay? Let's stand up and fight against what the enemy is doing. We're either going to have fear or faith today. We're going to do one or the other. And I'm telling you, I've chosen to have faith in God and what he has said and what the prophets have said. And we're going to stay with that and we're not going to do anything any different. So, now you find out today what God is saying. So, those are the three things we're going to do. So what I'm going to tell you today is what God told me. Y'all asked me to tell you what he told me last week. I mean, I got in a place where I could see and hear. I don't even know how to explain it except that it happens. And I get in those places where I just know that I know that I know. So that's what we're going to talk about. So first of all, Prophet Kuhneman. Prophet Kuhneman and uh, uh, Brenda Kuhneman, Lord of Hosts. Omaha, Nebraska, you've heard me talk about them. He started talking at the beginning of this decade that it was a decade of difference. Well, I started looking at all kinds of scriptures about it being a decade of difference. And then we heard someone else say it was a decade of dynamo. And then we heard someone else say that it was this and that. And I came along and I told you it's a decade of telling the devil, stop it, it's enough. So we got all these things going together, okay? So God is telling different people different things. And so, but it's a decade to decree. There's a difference between confessing the scriptures, proclaiming the scriptures, and decreeing the scriptures. And Job talks about when you make a decree, it's a legal thing. It's going to say, God, let me give you this example. In Job, it talks about God told the ocean, I put the sand as a boundary. We're going to talk about boundaries. And so the ocean comes and the ocean goes, well, I'm going to just cover you up sand. I'm going to come in. I'm going to take you away. And the sand just sits there and says, no, you got to go back because God decreed it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're going to do. That's how we're going to work today. Decrees. No, you got to go back because this is what God said because he is God. So now in Exodus 11, it talks about that not even a dog can wag its tongue against you. Well, what is he talking about there? He was showing that God has put a difference between us and the evil. God has put a difference between you and the evil. And because there was a great deliverance, now follow me what I'm saying, a great deliverance was about to happen by the blood of the Lamb. When God made that statement, he said, now you watch. I've been doing miracles. I've been doing signs. I've been doing all kinds of things. But now... I'm going to make such a difference that a dog can't even bark. That's pretty powerful. I mean, when you think about it, he said, but to activate this, take the blood of the lamb and put over the doorpost and the lintels. Get inside, and when that destroying spirit starts trying, I'm going to pass over, and I am going to cover you. Psalm 91 we're under that shelter of the Almighty God. Isn't that amazing? So we get under the shelter of the Almighty God by the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And so he said, I'm going to make such a difference. But I thought this was so wonderful. I've given this to you before. I'm going to show off marvelously is what God said. There's going to be such a difference. Stop being afraid. Say I'm different. God has made a difference between me and that virus, but it's bigger than the virus. I'm going to set you apart, and then I'm going to make it wonderful. <laughs> How many of you would you like to be wonderful? I mean, some of you can go, go to the grocery store and said, all I wanted was a dozen eggs, and I couldn't find them. All right, God said, I'm going to make it wonderful. So this thing is turning. 
You understand what I'm saying? I've been telling y'all that on Facebook for I don't know how long. It is turning. And so we're going to see now that this plague, because of the blood, shall pass over you. It's not going to destroy Amen. you. Come on. That's Let's right. stand up and fight. Let's fight with the scriptures, that two-edged sword. And so God is showing us that the bondage, I'm gonna, now you've got to follow what I'm saying. I understood from what God showed me. The bondage, where we are right now, has come because we have allowed our nation to habitually get into more debt and more debt. And even we as a people have allowed ourselves to get in debt. Thank God I got out of debt years ago and I'm debt free, thank you Jesus. And, but we begin, what happened to them in Egypt? They were in debt. If they were working to make brick, then Pharaoh came and said, well, guess what? You're going to have to do it without straw. He was just so mean. The more they got in debt, the more they got in debt, the more they got in debt. And then God said, you know what? I've had it. I've heard your prayers. Do you know that's what God is saying to us right now? In this nation, he has heard our prayers. He has heard our decrees. And he is standing up and going to do something about it. And so this debt thing has come. And so what Satan does is just two kingdoms. That mammon, and then there's the kingdom of God, righteousness, peace, and joy. And so now here we are right now. I want to locate where we are. We're in 2020. You have 2020 vision. 2020 vision means that you can see I want you to see into the realm of the spirit. I want you to see angelic activity helping us. Just like, uh, you know, there's more with us than there are with them. Then look up there, my eyes are wide open and I can see the mountains are filled with angels and chariots and horses of fire. And then have eyes to see, hey, I know what this devil's trying to do and then we're going to nail him. You got it? And so we're going to be able to see in both directions. And Perry Stone said that, I think he said this last week, the day of reckoning is here. Well, let me tell you what's the day of reckoning for the devil. Are you with me? It's not, yes, God is going to work with us from the, all the stupid stuff we've done. But my, you know what he's doing? That sheet says that he's saying mercy seven times. That's what the blood does. You take the blood of Jesus. And he said, when he told Mary, he said, don't touch me. Heaven ascended. I got to go. What was he doing? He was, oh, I got chill bumps all over me. He was taking the blood and putting it on the mercy seat. That's where we are right now. It will stop this nonsense of saying the wrong thing. Get up. I'm telling you, I ought to get up and get mad about what's going on. I mean, not, not at people. Goodness gracious. It's not people. It's the devil. Okay. Let's blame. Eve said, it was that devil. Come on, let's put the blame where it goes. Because as soon as Eve said that, then God said, hey, I have provision for this. When we start blaming each other, uh-uh. All we're going to do is get in the world to hurt. We judge each other and bring that junk on ourselves. So what we're going to do is say, God, I see that this is Satan. And you showed me through the power of the blood of Jesus in, Rome, in Revelation 12 that we're going to be able to testify and stop this nonsense. Anybody with me? I don't mean to be preaching, but I want to make sure you get it. So what does 20 mean? There's a whole bunch of things that 20 means, and I, I've shared that with you in the past, but just to go fast here, it, you know that everybody that was 20 years and younger actually got to go take Jericho. That's an example of deliverance. 20 has to do with deliverance. And I know some of y'all are thinking, man, I am not 20. But you know what? You can be 20 on the inside of you spiritually saying, God, go. I can take my mountain. You got it? 20 means completeness. I mean, Jacob carried on for 20 years with Laban, all that stuff. Laban changing his wages. And, and Jacob was like, sure, he brought it on himself. But you know what God did? He made a difference. Because when Jacob finally decided to leave after 20 years, he left wealthy, but you know what God did? He talked to Laban. He said, don't you put your finger on him. You back up, going back to your house. Isn't that amazing? That's what God's doing today. He's making a difference with us. And it's where God begins to deal with us. And I thought this was so amazing. I didn't even know this. I found this out when I was studying. Boaz and Ruth, you know, it's one of my favorite stories. 
Did you know that Boaz and Ruth, that situation of redemption is mentioned 20 times? Wow. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> As our Redeemer, just that, uh, just that little bitty book. And he talks about redemption. Isn't that amazing? So 20, 20, double, 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 and double again. Double in mercy, double in vindication. The, the Lord is vindicating us against Satan and what he has done. And double in being redeemed, whatever we've been through. I've been through stuff and y'all been through stuff. It's passed, now it's gone. God passed over us, he's protecting us. And now 20 is saying redemption. You know, we've all been saying this scripture, you believe the prophets and, and, and you're gonna prosper. But the first part of that says in 2 Chronicles 20, 20, 20, 20 vision, 20, 20 vision. It says, you believe the Lord and you'll be established. That's what takes care of fear. Okay, so now what I'm gonna tell you is, this is, all these different prophets are different. You gotta see how they are and you gotta understand how God works with them. They prophesy in different areas. Um, Prophet Kuhnman, which I, 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 you know, I had the honor of going and setting up some prayer groups, a prophetic prayer groups in his church in January. So I've been knowing him for the last two or three years. And he starts helping us see the angelic side and the demonic side, not just to do with our nation, but how other nations, did you know that, are affecting this nation and what God says about it. Because you know, every once in a while, you be reading this Bible, and you just read there in the Old Testament, and God says, all right, I've had it. That's enough. Man, I'm going to take some. I'm going to take somebody down. And so when Prophet Kuhnman starts, he's helping us to prepare, and he's giving us decrees so we can start praying out these decrees about our nation. Now, Tuck Pierce, I don't know what y'all think about these guys, but it's okay, whatever you think you can think, but you need to hear when it's a true prophet. He started, he said he was taken up way back, it was in the 80s sometime, where God took him up and showed him where we are right now. Isn't that amazing? But he helps us, if you'll listen, he helps us how to understand how to receive our inheritance, our rightful inheritance of what God is doing and how God will vindicate us. It's amazing. That Sheets and, and, and Tim, Tim Sheets, they start interceding and, and show us how the angelic, I mean, the army of angels showing us how to decree, showing us how to stand in the gap, make up the hedge. Kenneth Copeland is amazing. He teaches us how to, what? Take back what belongs to us, get in that place where we can be financially blessed. And we start understanding how all of this stuff is working. So I'm not saying that. You've got to get in here and hear the Lord so you can be established. I'm telling you where we are. Remember point number one, I'm telling you where we are. And so where we are right now is listen to the prophets. Pray what they're saying. Agree with them and stop saying this other mess. Mm -hmm. Stop saying what the news is saying. Media, mm -hmm. y'all look up that word. I've told you that before. Anyway, stop saying that and get in here and go, God, you tell me what's going on and you tell me what to say. You know, Isaiah 6, he said, oh, this movement of God. God started moving. Even the doorpost was shaken. Lord. That's what we're coming into. Mm -hmm. And then he said, oh, my mouth, my mouth. And he's, oh, he said, well, I got this thing. So I'm going to fix that. So anyway, some of you stick out your tongue right now. You might get a cold fire put on it so we can get our mouth straightened out. So that 20 means the year of the mouth, the year of the eyes we're having face to face. So we're going to have to see in order to speak, to create but we gotta have a face-to-face -face intimate relationship with the Lord and with his word. Now then, now God does type and shadow, and I've, I've shared that with you guys before, and y'all need to understand type and shadow. Our president called Jerusalem the capital of Israel. Isn't that amazing? Uh-huh, it's very amazing, because what that means is God said, you bless Israel, I'm gonna bless y'all. So what that did was take, here's Israel, and just take us and spiritually put us in the right place spiritually. So you go, well, it sure doesn't look like it. Listen to all this stuff that's happening. You're listening to the wrong place. Yes, this stuff is happening. 
Hey, listen, I had to go to the grocery store. I understand what it's like. <laughs> I went the other day to the grocery store. I was there at 6 o'clock, 6 a.m. I got up at 2, and I was there at 6. And so I went in, got my little buggy, and before I could even get to where I was going, it was all gone. So I understand that part, too. But you know what I did? I'd say, oh, well, whatever, God, just tell me what part to go into where there's stuff left. You're going to provide no matter what because I wanted to see correctly. And I said, Lord, help me see. Let me look at these people in this store. Let me see their eyes. And you know what was really cool? This one lady that was helping me check out, it was real, she said, oh, where did you get that piece of meat? And I said, well, they just put some out in the back. She said, oh, I'm at work right now, and, and I've been waiting for them to put that out. I said, well, would you just hold my groceries? I ran back to the back of the store, and I grabbed that meat up, an armload of meat, and I ran, it up, <laughs> ran up there, and I gave it to that lady. I said, you didn't check me out yet, did you? I mean, I was running just to be a blessing to somebody because she couldn't get back there. Isn't that amazing? So your eyes have to be open to what's going on. God has a way. Now just think about it. I'm 76. I'm running through the store back there. I'm helping this little lady at the checkout place because God wanted to bless her. So you don't look at what's going on. You look at how God wants to bless. Anyway, that's my testimony that happened to me the other day at 6 o'clock in the morning. Anyway, here we go. So God has positioned us so that he could bless us because he has certain plans and the enemy is not going to be able to stop those plans. Now then, I'm going to get to what God showed me. Now, y'all ready for this? This is heavy duty. Everybody ready? Heavy duty stuff. I said, God, what's the big picture? Because now we got this financial mess going on in our nation. Then we got all this other stuff that's going on. And I said, I know, I know you've shown me. Well, sure enough, the Lord, I, I, I can't even explain how, but all of a sudden in a vision and understanding, which he gives me visions a lot, boom, I saw it. And I said, I want to see who the big demon is and what this big thing is that's going on in our nation. Because I know that it's not just about the virus. The devil is trying to take our nation down. And I know somehow the new world order, the, the new money and all that stuff is behind it. But how is it? And then I saw it. Man, I had a, I had a something from the back of my memory came up to the front of my memory. Then I remembered in August 2015, there was a big old thing happened on the Empire State Building. Y'all probably remember this. And it started flashing up those uh, demon faces. And even the news said that it was faces and images of Satan. Do y'all remember that? Look it up on the internet, and I'm not going to try to go into all the detail anyway. It's grotesque. What the demon was, death and destruction. Mm -hmm. And then I heard Jonathan Conn, whatever you think about him, I know who he is. He's a modern day Jeremiah. He's the weeping prophet. It's okay. And he's calling this nation to repentance. We had David Wilkerson before him. We've had people. You got it? You hear what I'm saying? I want us, yes, we're doing this virus thing, uh-huh, but the prophet said there's an answer coming soon. So, therefore, Father, we receive that answer right now in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be short-lived. Come Passover, April 8th, boom, you're going to see something awesome happen, okay, about the virus. But let's go after the big structure. Uh -huh. Let's go after the big thing. Let's go after what's trying to take the whole nation down. And I saw it. And so it's death and destruction. Even the newspaper and the, the TVs called it that death and destruction. I mean, when I saw it, I was like, ah! you know, I saw it. God told me this. I know he did. And when he showed this to me, I said, Jesus, oh my God. What am I going to do about that? Here I'm this one little person over here with a handful of praying people. And man, I prayed and prayed. I'm telling you, I prayed. I hardly slept. I was just praying and seeking God and saying, God, how are we going to do this? And I was actually, now y'all don't, you know, y'all already know how I am. Don't, don't judge me. Please don't judge me. You're going to get in trouble if you do. Don't judge me. But what I said, I said, Lord, send us a prophet to open this thing back up. Because now we see where this is. But anyway, as, as it went on and on and on, I finally figured out I'm not a prophet. I just teach your stuff. But I, I realize now what's happening. God wanted me to come 
and get on live Facebook. And I don't know how many people I'm gonna, that's gonna hear this. I don't know how many people are gonna say, yes, that's the answer. I think you are. I think your eyes are gonna be open if you'll just pray about what I'm saying. Because I'm for saving the whole nation. I, I Yes, I want the virus to go away. I do, and I want all this other quarantine, all that stuff to stop. Yes, I do. But I want us to have a nation when this is over. Mm -hmm. And I don't want us to have a bankrupt nation when this is over. I don't want to have a depression when this is over, okay? Are you with me? Anybody? I want to hear somebody out there. Anybody talking to me? I see Lorraine and different people are going, yes, yes, yes. Trudy, all of you guys, you know what I'm saying. All right, so what I'm telling you is that this, this demon at the Empire State Building in New York, think about it, that thing started typing chatter. Watch me. Look at me. I'm saying death. I'm saying destruction. And then the, had the, the, the gates of Babylon. You ought to go back in the, and just read it in the internet. He was just like going, see me, see me. And I said, oh my God, when it happened, I said, Jesus, what are we going to do? So Jonathan Kahn and other people said, did you see this is happening? we got to call the church to repent. And everybody, blah, 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 blah. you know, they just kind of went on their way. But I'm telling you, all right, so what goes around comes around. Here we are, March the 20th, 2020. And here I'm sitting here telling you, we got to deal with this. Now, this is not a low-level devil, okay? This is the higher-ranking ones that has to do with our nation. I'm not trying to do all of it. I'm only doing my little bitty part. I got one part to this puzzle, and you're part of my puzzle. We're going to do this today. And so I got some things that I got to explain to you. This is from Daniel. You got to understand. <clears throat> when Jude was disputing with Satan over the bones of Moses, this is really interesting because you need to learn how to deal with higher levels of devils. And I taught that whole school on the Torontan church. You ought to go back. There's 12 lessons on that. I learned that from Kenneth Hagin. And so it's in Jude, is verse 9. When he was, I'm going to read this to you. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. He did not bring a railing accusation, but said, simply said, the Lord rebuke you. Isn't that interesting? Because we're talking about Satan. Jesus in the wilderness said, it is written, it is written, it is said. Now, follow me. So, if we're going to try in any shape, form, or fashion, which we're not going to try to, we're going to do it, this demonic level, we're not going to bring railing accusations. I know that was an angel. That was Michael. I mean, think about it. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to do it exactly like the Word says. Mm -hmm. And you say, how are you and maybe a bunch of women and a few men going to be able to address such a thing. This is my part. I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, I didn't want to do this, but I am doing this because I understand it. And we're going to do our part. Then God's going to bring somebody else to do their part. And then somebody else to do their part. And we're going to see this nation turned around. Amen. We're going to see God turn things around. There's no reason for us to lose this nation. There's no reason for us to end up in bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. God promised even one of the prophets said that this month is Miracle Money Month. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. People are being laid off all over the place. But he said it's Miracle Money Month. I told somebody yesterday, they said, I don't know what we're going to do. And I said, I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to prophesy. That's it's right. Miracle Money Month. Miracle Money God's, Month. I said, I don't know where it's going to come from. Maybe the raven will show up. Maybe, <laughs> like Jerry Savelle said, maybe the dog with a bag in his mouth is full of money. But it's going to come. You see the difference I'm telling you? And I know it's these demonic spirit that was up on that Empire State Building was just flaunting it in our face and said, I'm gonna take this nation. And I'm telling you, I know one time, I, I, I don't go into all that, but anyway, I have seen Satan one time, more than once, but one time up above the earth, I was taken in a vision. Long story short, God showed me ahead of time what was going to happen. He takes me places in the Spirit sometimes, and I see and I know things. 
So how we're going to work with this today, we're going to pray. This is how we're going to work with this today. The Ancient of Days always supersedes the Ancient of Times. Now you got to get in the book of Daniel. When you get in the book of Daniel, you're going to start seeing what I'm saying. The Daniel 2, he says that God, the Ancient of Days, God changes times and seasons. We need this time and season changed in our nation. We do not need it to keep doing what it's doing. Our president is doing the best he can. The government is doing the best they can with what we got. It's a big plot, I can tell you. But it's not a person's plot. It's a demonic plot. The enemy doesn't want Israel to make it. The enemy doesn't want our nation to make it. But God said different, okay? So he changes. So what we want is the Ancient of Days to change this season we're in to the one that he prophesied through the prophets that this year was going to be a year of harvest. This year, great grace is going to go to the ends of the earth. Worldwide revival everywhere. Everybody's going to be ministering signs, wonders, miracles, and no need among us. And that doesn't mean we're going to be living off the government. That means that God's going to be blessing us. And then when they were in Egypt, they were, quote, living off the government. God set them free from that. All right, now you follow me? All right, he removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise, knowledge to them that knows understanding. So you have to get wisdom and knowledge. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what's in the darkness because light dwells in him. When God shows up, what's going to happen? Light's going to happen to the darkness. Now, there's all kinds of stuff that needs to be, that's hidden in darkness. We need to say, light be. Light be. Light be. And then that darkness all of a sudden just runs because light is there. And things that have been hidden are being made manifest. Yes, that means, that means exactly what you're thinking. A lot of people in the situation is going to be in trouble. All right, all right, so let's go on. Daniel 7, verse 25 through 27. The devil speaks great words against the Most High. Now, if y'all don't take this, take this right. The devil, is, the devil is saying, I'm going to destroy America. The devil is saying, I'm going to destroy Israel. And God is saying, no, you're not. No, you're not. And he's trying to wear the saints out. And that's in the book of Revelation. Do you feel worn out? If you do, you need to get up and fight. I mean, we all do. Goodness, we've been fighting. Goodness. Yes, we've been fighting. But see, what he wants to do is wear us down. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, Lord, what if I lose my job? I don't, I don't, I don't. He's been telling us, get out of debt. He's been telling us, prepare for the future. He's been telling us. Kenneth Hagin Sr. had a vision in 1951, and he wrote about it in one of his books. David Wilkerson told us stuff in the early 70s. It's not like it's a secret. It's wide open. But don't let the devil wear you down by making you think that we're the America's, America is not going downhill. That's right. America is standing. God bless America, land that I love. All right. That's right. Now, the devil thinks to change the times and the laws. Has he changed? Oh, my God. Some of the craziest, stupid laws that we've ever had. Good is evil. Evil is good. You watch those laws being turned around. They took the Ten Commandments out years ago, but guess what? It's been put back in. You understand what I'm saying? God is in the, God is in the midst of this. And uh, <clears throat> they shall be given into, the, into his hands until a time and times of the dividing of times. I know this is talking about the seven-year tribulation. But the judgment shall sit. This is the part I want you to see. And they'll take away his dominion. The judgment has been given to us by God. America is going to preach the gospel to the very ends of the earth. America has been established. Our forefathers established it upon righteousness. They came here so that they could have freedom, so that we could send missionaries all over the world. And it takes money. I'm telling you, God's judgment is going to sit 
against the enemy. You ought to read in John 14, 15, 16, and 17. Jesus said, judgment has already come to what? The evil one. All we have to do is speak that out. We don't have to say anything. We do it correctly. Is everybody following me? I want to make sure. Uh, I'm, am I making sense? Anybody there? Um, somebody talk to me. Am I making sense? All right. Trudy, I know you got it. You prayed with me for years. Anybody else? Is this making sense to anybody? All right. Somebody on Facebook, leave me a, leave me a, a note here so I know. All right. But the judgment shall sit, and they will take away Satan's dominion, consume and destroy it to the end. The kingdom, the dominion, the greatness of the kingdom under the whole earth shall be given. All this stuff, do you realize I'm telling you prophetically where we are? shall be given to the saints of the Most High God, Glory. whose kingdom is everlasting, mm -hmm. and all dominions will serve and obey Him. This is where we are, if you can believe. Daniel seven twenty two, Until the days, the Ancient of Days came, judgment was given to the saints of the Most High God, and the Time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Are you with me? Now, I said all that. I'm going to go back. One, two, three. I'm going to make sure you're with me. All right, Trudy says it's making sense. Great word. All right, thank you, Jesus. Brenda's understanding, but she's been praying with me for years and years. Number one, where are we right now? Times and seasons. It's a car anointing to be able to see where we are. I saw the big picture. It has to do with that Empire State Building and Satan trying to make fun of us. You understand? All right. Let's see. What are you handing me here? All right. <clears throat> Empire. Empire State Building. Supreme power in governing. Supreme dominion. Sovereignty. Imperial power. No nation can rightfully claim the empire of the ocean. Uh, it talks about jurisdiction. Uh, dominion of an emperor. Governing influence. Okay, so this is this is what Christy gave to me. So the Empire State Building. Just think about it. Satan said, I'm telling you where we are. In 2015, see a picture of me? Death, destruction. But I just got through reading to you right here. There's another decree. That's right. And it's from the Ancient of Days. Yes. And he said, I'm going to take that stuff. Now, now stay with me. I'm going to take that stuff away from that kingdom. Yes. And I'm going to put it into the hands of my kingdom, righteousness, peace, and joy. That's exactly what he did. I started with yes. Exodus 11. That's exactly what he did. I'm going to make a, dim a difference. And when they got ready to leave there, after the blood of the Lamb, all of a sudden, 400 years of back wages. Hello, anybody seeing what I'm saying? You got eyes? Can you see? Can you hear? Mm -hmm. This is where we are. Totally makes sense, Dorothy says. Uh, don't you know it makes sense? So, now, the Ancient of Days. We've called on him a few times in our prayer times that we've had around here. I'm telling you. The judgment is set. Mm. This is what God is saying. God is saying, I want America blessed. God bless America. And Satan can't change that. Now, what he can do is make you afraid and everybody else afraid. And then we end up going, being mean to each other. Don't go to fear. Go to faith, okay? But those of us with a word in our mouth, mm -hmm. the two-edged sword in our hand, mm -hmm. the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, we've got on that breastplate of righteousness where we're not afraid emotionally. We've got on that, that truth belt, girting us up, holding us together. We've got our feet are shod properly with peace. God is going. Now, you hear me? I just prophesied to you from the word. I like the more sure word of prophecy, Peter said. <laughs> okay. So, the judgment shall sit. 
I hope you're following me and I hope you're going to do this. All you that are out there with your pastors and you got prayer groups, you can do this. Don't bring a raying accusation against Satan. That's not how to do it. How to do it is simply say what God said. Mm -hmm. God is saying through the prophets right now, God is saying America is blessed. God is saying, I gave you a president, whether you like him or don't like him, that can turn this whole thing around. Yes, he's a wrecking ball, but he can turn the whole thing around. Mm -hmm. God is telling us through Kenneth Copeland last year and the year before and this year, it's a year of harvest. Mm -hmm. People, look out onto the fields. They're white unto harvest. Don't say there's four more months. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus said. We need to pray laborers, but we need money to send laborers out there. It costs money to do any of this. And the devil was sitting there saying, no, 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 I got it, I got it. They didn't get it. The church didn't get it. They didn't pay attention. Well, I'm paying attention and so mm -hmm. are you. And we're a part of this whole thing. And God, I'm telling you what, God can take. One or two or three people mm -hmm. gathered together in his name, making agreement. And he told Peter, Matthew 16, Matthew 18, the gates of hell cannot prevail mm -hmm. against my church. Mm -hmm. When you have the revelation of who God is and the revelation of who you are. Wow, I'm telling you what I am. Get your prayer groups together mm -hmm. and don't be stupid. Don't be doing something dumb or you're going to get your head knocked off. I'm just telling you, where you get into the scriptures and you start prophesying and you stay on it and you stop saying all this negative stuff, stop it. Stop that negative stuff. And you get over here and you go, okay, God said that there's going to be a difference. Okay, I got it over here. And then God said we're a decade of dynamo. Why don't you act like a dynamo? Why don't you stand up strong? Why don't you stand up and go, no, God told me this, and this is what, and all, if we didn't do anything, and just whoever's, I mean, there was like, I, I told you like 150, 200 comments last night, go to listen to this today. If just the 200 of us, 300, Gideon's 300, if we just said, Jesus is Lord over the United States of America, Jesus is Lord over the United States of America, I proclaim Jesus is Lord over the United States. I decree the Lordship of Jesus Christ, yes. the Most High God. Jesus, this is one nation, not under the God of all these other crazy things, mm -hmm. under the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the United States of America. If that's all you did, those words are going out there, creating, creating, creating. That's what prophecy is all about. And so you get together. We're going to pray today. Everybody, I'm just seeing what y'all are saying. Everybody's getting this. I think, every, yeah, what faith says. See, we just start saying these things and stop agreeing. Stop agreeing with the devil. Mm -hmm. Just stop agreeing with the devil. Because when we agree with the devil, we agree with fear. And when you are in agreement with fear, I taught them agreement. Lord, I learned that way back when we went in the ministry in, in 81. There's the power in agreement, whether it's negative or positive. If two of you shall agree on this earth, touching this thing, my father is going to take care of it. But Ananias and Sapphira got in agreement, mm -hmm. and it ended in death. Mm -hmm. So the power of agreement, if we're saying the same words, we're saying the same words, and in your prayer groups, then we're going to start. So what I want us to do today, and if y'all are too chicken to do this, it's all right, I shouldn't say that, that's terrible. But anyway, <laughs> you have to think about, we're not doing low level, okay? Yes, the virus is going to stop. They've been prophesying it's going to stop. I agree with them, it's going to stop, okay? And the virus virus and flu has been worse than that in our nation. Come on. Stats to prove it. But that's not what it's about. I want to go after the big devil. I want to go after the Goliath. That's right. And we're going to run toward him, yes. not away from him. Mm -hmm. And so God is raising up, I think, me and these 300 people. <laughs> 
And we are going to go after this thing. And we're going to address this thing in New York. Are you willing to pray with me? We're going to pray on live Facebook. God, I plead the blood of Jesus over all of us. Proclaim and decree the power of the blood. But we're going to pray. Will you pray with me? I'm going to look in here and see who's going to pray with me. Brenda said she would. Maggie said she would. Who else is going to pray with me? All right, come on, everybody. I need you to do this. And this is not, you know, Jesus, the disciples came and said, teach us to pray. They didn't say teach us how to pray. So I'm not trying to teach you how to pray today. I'm just teaching you to pray. Prayer works. And so what we're going to do, here's Signe. Yeah, oh yeah, I'll pray with you. Cheryl, all of y'all said y'all going to be praying with Amy, all of us. All right, so now the first thing I'm going to pray. Let, oh yeah, Sean's there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at all these people. Glory to God. Adriana, yes. Barbara, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Vicki, come on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray a sentence prayer. I learned to do that in 1969. <laughs> and then when I pray my sentence prayer, then y'all pray after me. I don't have a written prayer. I pray that God would put his words in my mouth as we address this thing. So the first thing we're going to do, every one of y'all, every one of y'all that are still with me, is you go present yourself before your Heavenly Father, okay? And just honor Him, our Heavenly Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. Yes. And then we just begin to honor Him and worship Him and thank Him for being our Father. Thank Him for the honor and the privilege of being called His child. Thank Jesus for our salvation. And then submit ourselves to the leadership and yield to the Holy Spirit of God. Father, we come to you and we thank you. You are our Father, our Father. The Spirit of the Father raised Jesus Christ from the dead. It's your Spirit, Father, that's in us. Our hearts are crying, Abba, Abba, Father. Thank you for loving us first. Thank you for being our Father. Oh, how we thank you. How, how we praise you. We love you. Honor you, sir. Holy Spirit, help us. We yield to you. Jesus, you are our Lord. Help us. Holy Spirit, pray through us to address these demonic things that's trying to take our nation down. Give us your words, your words to speak and to stop this onslaught. And Father God, as we stand here today with our hands lifted, our hearts lifted, we pray just like Joshua did. There was Moses up there, and they were having to hold up his arms. They had to put the rocks under his arms so that he could hold those arms up, that place of authority. We're holding our arms up right now as Joshua's, all the Joshua's are saying to the son, Stand still! Moon, stand still. And Father, we believe right now as we speak toward that demonic throne thing that has tried to come against our nation, that you will give us the right words and we'll say them properly. We thank you in Jesus' name. Now, open your eyes. We're not... We're going to talk to that dominion, and we're going to take it down. So we come before that death and destruction that flashed its face on our Empire State Building. And we say, stop it. It's enough. Stand still. No more. Cease. Desist. In your maneuvers against us in this nation. You cannot and you will not destroy our nation. Stop. Now. You are rebuked. God said, 
the judgment will stand. This is one nation, one nation. under the God, under the God and, Father and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. America, America is being saved, is being saved. Right, now. right now. We're pushing back. 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 That darkness. That darkness. And we say stop. And we say stop. It's not time. 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 By the power. By the power. Of the blood. Of the blood. And the name. And the name. Of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Stop now. Stop now. We push you back. 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 It is written. It is written. In our nation. In our nation. We are one nation. We are one nation. Under the God. Under the God. And Father. And Father. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We worship you. We honor you, sir. And we ask you to activate. The angels right now. Send those angels right now. And Father, we tell you, we win. Yes. We win. We win. Yes. This little remnant of praying people, mm -hmm. <laughs> clean hands and a pure heart, Father, come before your throne of mercy. And we say, mercy in our nation not judgment. Mercy in our nation, 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 not judgment. And Father, we judge this virus. Mm -hmm. We judge these demonic situations that is underground that's trying mm -hmm. to tear down this nation we judge them and we tell them stop now in jesus name right now right now thank you father thank you lord and father god together this band of praying people mm -hmm. just like the 120 in the upper room we ask you to send the fire of the Holy Ghost all over America. Yes. Send the winds of the Holy Spirit, that west wind to blow away those yes. demonic spirits. West wind to blow away. East wind, north wind, south wind of the Holy Spirit blowing, blowing, blowing in a fresh move of the Holy Ghost. Yes. The outpouring of the Spirit of God. Yes. On all flesh, dreams, visions, Lord, prophecies. You're making a difference in us, Lord, and we believe. And we say it starts right now, today. This is a day of difference today. It's turning, 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 turning toward righteousness today. You said when we had righteousness, the people would rejoice and Father, we just thank you for that. Lord, we see the big picture. And we just ask you if there's more prayers that we need to pray, there are more words we need to speak. Help us, Father, to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit. And we'll shoot those arrows, those seven arrows. We'll shoot those arrows. But this time we're shooting them against death and destruction. And we forbid death and destruction yes. to rule and reign in this nation in Jesus, in Jesus name, name by the power of the blood mm -hmm. thank you father now we worship you sir thank you lord thank you holy spirit thank you father thank you angels for helping us thank you father thank you lord thank you thank you for staying with me I know I went a long time but that was okay because we had to get through all this. I hope this made sense to you. Email me at staff at embracing his grace and talk to me. So I know embracing his grace.org. 
send me some comments. I don't do Messenger, so put the comments on my Facebook page and let me know what God is telling you. Let's stay together. We may have to do this again, but how many of you, I, I want to hear from you, how many of you can actually say that you know, even though we can't see it, and you're going to hear just the opposite, I mean, as soon as we turn on the news, we're going to hear something else. How many of you can actually say that you know in your heart we turned something today and it's starting to move in the right direction? We apply the blood of the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Father, because that's where the life is. The life is in the blood. And we're applying the blood of Jesus against that demonic force. I'm telling you, I know what God told me. And I didn't tell you all the details. But he had a plan, I can tell you. He was working on a plan that about this summer, that demon was going to try to take us down. You better hear what I'm saying. And I didn't go into all that. But he's not going to do it. I know it may seem like just a handful of us. Man, I tell you what. God knows how to say by few or by many. And I just thank you. Thank you all. I'm looking at some of you. Yeah, we turned something today, Brenda said. Yes. She's got chill bumps. Um, Kay Rowland, she said, the blood is turning it. Yes. Two or three are gathered. We're pleading the blood. Just thank you. I just see all of it. I'm telling you. It happens in the spirit realm first. Then you start seeing the manifestation of it in the natural. When that demon appeared on the Empire State Building in 2015, just think about what crazy laws has been enacted since then. See, it manifested, and then things started what? Actually coming into laws. I mean, I'm not saying it all. You're reading in between the lines because if I say too much, you know how that's going to be. But I'm just telling you, it starts in the spirit. What we did today starts in the spirit, and then we'll start seeing it change, 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 change. You believe this virus is done, it's over with. Prophet Kuhneman said, boom. He talks about three strikes. He did this, uh, when was this, Christmas, Wednesday night? Sunday. Sunday. You need to go on his uh, Facebook. He said, when the prophet stood and said, this time tomorrow will change. Because God says there is a tomorrow that is better than the current crisis at hand. L listen to that again. The prophet stood up and he said, this time tomorrow. I know that scripture. Man, that scripture has worked for me. It's so mm -hmm. piece of property I need to sell. I know that scripture. Whoa. And I'm not the gatekeeper going to be trampled either. I'm the guy that said, yes, I believe, <laughs> I believe, I believe. But look what prophet Kuhneman said. Because God says there is a tomorrow that is better than the current crisis at hand. If you position yourself properly and you hear from God, I'm telling you, you're going to just be, you're going to be just blessed financially. You're going to come through this. You're going to stay right underneath the shelter of the Almighty God. He's passed over us. His covering is over us, and we're going to stay in that secret place of the Most High God. I love you guys. If y'all want me to do this again, just let me know. And I apologize that it didn't work when we first got started, but anyway, it's all right. Yeah, I believe for a 24-hour turnaround. In fact, Krista, we were praying a couple of weeks ago, and she saw the clock going backwards. We were praying about this nation, and I just said, I believe every bit of it. It can be a 24-hour turnaround that happened in, in that situation at the gate. Uh, Hezekiah turned it back 15 years. I'm believing for that. Joshua stopped it 24 years. And you know, they've act, I mean, 24 hours, you know they've actually found that 24 hours down at NASA? It really happened. And I believe we turned it back today to save our nation, to go preach great grace worldwide. Signs, wonders, miracles, and no need among us. I hope I could just preach from now on. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Talk to me. That's the only way I know that you want to do this. And I do want to tell everybody, 
Y'all been sending in offerings, and I'm so thankful and so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. But more than anything, bless you and thank you for your prayers. I need your prayers. And I loved my birthday. I had a blast. <laughs> my birthday went on for days and days and days. And I knew when it stopped, I was going to have to deal with this. But I am up for the game, and so are you. Anyway, bye. I love y'all. I'll see you next time.